the Baltic piece of the last three decades has turned into a powder keg. After the EU banned the transport of certain goods to Kaliningrad through Lithuania, the conflict with neighboring Russia has escalated. Russia continues to raise tensions and today threaten Lithuania with a response that will have a serious negative impact and is considering no longer recognizing the independence of the former Soviet republics of Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. The questions remain, what is its objective? What is the strategic importance of Kaliningrad for Russia? And how will this conflict end? Let's explore together and find out how this conflict could change the global overview. The Kaliningrad Oblast is one of the federal subjects of Russia and is a Russian exclave. That is a territory with no territorial connection with the rest of the country and surrounded by the territory of other countries. In the case of Kaliningrad, to the north and east by Lithuania, to the south by Poland and to the west by the Baltic Sea. The capital of the Oblast is the homonymous city of Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad has two outstanding geographical elements, to the east the Vistula Spit, a large sandy bar dividing the Vistula Lagoon from the Gdansk Gulf and shared by Kaliningrad and Poland. To the north of the Vistula Spit is the Strait of Baltiusk, a strait excavated in 1497 and which today is the main outlet to the open sea for several Russian and Polish ports. The other geographical element located north of Kaliningrad is the Curonian Isthmus, a narrow sandy isthmus that separates the Curonian Lagoon from the Baltic Sea, where Kaliningrad shares borders with Lithuania and where some points are only 400 meters wide. Although Kaliningrad owes its name to the former leader of the Bolshevik Revolution Mikhail Kalinin, the capital of the oblast is the ancient Konigsberg, a port city located at the mouth of the Pregola River and founded by the Crusader Order of the Teutonic Knights in their conquest of the former Baltic nation of the Prussians. Konigsberg became the capital of a powerful state during the Middle Ages, the Kingdom of Prussia, the historical predecessor of today's Germany. Konigsberg ceased to be the capital when the Prussian royal family moved the capital of the kingdom to Berlin in 1701. During World War II, the city witnessed heavy combat between German and Soviet forces, falling under the control of the Red Army in the Battle of Konigsberg. After the end of World War II, the Western Allies accepted Joseph Stalin's demands to keep the region under their control as a compensation from Germany to Russia for all the losses caused to their country during World War II. And in the Potsdam Conference of 1945, one-third of the region was ceded to Moscow and two-thirds in the south to Poland. Stalin initiated a process of transformation in the region, first changing its name in 1946 to the current name, and initiating a process of ethnic cleansing and repopulation of the place, that is the compulsory exile of hundreds of thousands of Germans and the repopulation of the place with mostly Russian and Ukrainian citizens, all to erase the German identity of the place. After the independence of the Baltic states in 1991, the region lost its land connection with the Russian Federation, thus becoming an exclave, and increasing its importance as a strategic point for Russia, for which the Russian Federation signed cooperation agreements with Lithuania in 1999 and 2002, to ensure free population, commercial and even military traffic between its territory and Kaliningrad through Lithuanian territory. But why is this territory so important for the Russian Federation? First, the territory has an important industrial and commercial tradition within the Russian Federation, being Kaliningrad, its only commercial port of exit to the Baltic Sea that does not freeze during winters, as it happens with St. Petersburg. But the port not only has a strong commercial tradition, but also a military one, since it served as a defensive bastion during the Cold War, and according to the analysis of many researchers and specialists, it is the location of nuclear-capable missiles with a range to the very heart of NATO in an eventual conflict. But there is another strategic position that the Russian Federation needs to defend. Kaliningrad is also a deep water port, and is the headquarters of the Russian Baltic Sea Fleet. And why is the Baltic Sea so important? The Baltic Sea is a vast inland sea in northern Europe, linked to the North Sea by the succession of Danish Straits. It covers an area of 377,000 square kilometers and washes the map of northern Europe. 
The sea was a place of expansion and trade for the German peoples, who through the Hanseatic League and the Teutonic Order exerted their influence over the entire region for centuries. The Baltic was also the scene of the rise of the Swedish Empire, which during the 17th century became one of the world's great powers. After the Great Northern War, Russia seized large territories from Sweden and succeeded it as the major maritime power in Northern Europe. Following Russia's military invasion of Ukraine, two Nordic countries that had been firmly neutral, Finland and Sweden, reversed their policies and applied for membership in the NATO military alliance. The Baltic Sea will indeed become a NATO lake, Andrei Korchanov, head of Russia's International Affairs Council, recently declared. Indeed, with Sweden and Finland becoming NATO members, Russia will retain some 200 kilometers of Baltic coastline. While the remaining 90% of the 8,000 kilometers of coastline will be shared by alliance countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, and Finland. For some this is a disaster for Moscow, which has always seen the alliance's expansion as a security threat. What is clear is that the geostrategic map of the region will look completely different when Finland and Sweden join NATO. Moscow annexed the territory in 1945, at the end of World War II. Since then, Russia has regarded Kaliningrad as its unsinkable aircraft carrier. In the face of NATO expansion, Moscow has reinforced its military presence in Kaliningrad, organizing important maneuvers. In recent years, nuclear-armed missiles and S-400 anti-aircraft defense systems have been installed there. In February 2022, Russia deployed hypersonic missiles there, just before the entry of its troops into Ukraine. Lithuania's partial blockade of the Russian Baltic exclave of Kaliningrad opens a new front between the European Union and Russia. Kaliningrad and the surrounding area, home to nearly 1 million Russians, are connected to the rest of Russia by a rail link through EU and NATO member Lithuania. The Lithuanian government has cut off the shipment of supplies arriving by rail from Moscow, causing it to become virtually isolated. In addition, Kaliningrad authorities have pointed out that Lithuania has also restricted the transit of goods by road, which is why those materials banned in the European sanctions package can only be transported by sea. This is not Lithuania's decision, but simply the implementation of what the EU has agreed, replied Gabrielius Landsbergis, the Baltic country's foreign minister. Russia's claims about its boycott are inaccurate. Lithuania complies with the economic sanctions imposed by the EU, of which Russia was informed. At present, those sanctions cover only part of the goods traveling to Kaliningrad through Lithuania, food and other goods, as well as passengers, transit as before. Russia has called on the European Union to immediately restore transit with Kaliningrad. The Kremlin warned that Lithuania will face serious consequences. For this decision which was described as hostile and unprecedented and assured that it will have consequences for Lithuanians. Immediately, the secretary of the Russian Security Council, Nikolai Petrushev, one of the men closest to President Vladimir Putin, visited the Russian enclave to chair a security meeting. For him, Lithuania's hostile actions show that Russia cannot trust the West. Moscow accuses Vilnius of violating the 1994 Partnership and Cooperation Agreement and the 2002 Joint Declaration on Transit between Kaliningrad and the rest of the territory of the Russian Federation. Although Lithuanian Prime Minister Ingrida Shimonite has said that it is ironic to hear Russia complain about alleged violations of international law, given that it has violated possibly all international treaties in its conflict with Ukraine. The question is whether Russia considers the blockade to be a measure that puts Kaliningrad under threat from a military point of view. The agreement signed in 2004 allows civilian and military traffic between Russia and Kaliningrad through the territory of Lithuania, which now fears a possible movement of Russian troops. The Kremlin warned, the situation is more than serious, we reserve the right to act. Among the possible Russian reactions is the Savalki Corridor, the shortest road between the territory of Belarus, a close Russian ally, and Kaliningrad. Suvalki is a strategically important strip of territory, seizure of the corridor would isolate Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia from the rest of NATO by paralyzing their communications. 
Russia would have the option of blockading these allies by land and air in a worst-case scenario. In such a case, the allies would respond and a NATO-Russia conflict would break out. But for you, what do you think could be the consequence of this blockade by the Lithuanian government? Or what action do you think Russia might take in retaliation? Or do you think the situation will be resolved through diplomatic channels? Leave us your comments, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so, and to share this video. And see you in our next exploration in search of wonders around our planet.